Our scripture reading today comes from 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verses 1 through 12. Paul writes to the church at Corinth, When I came to you, brothers and sisters, I did not come proclaiming the mystery of God to you in lofty words or wisdom, for I decided to know nothing among you except Jesus Christ and Him crucified. And I came to you in weakness and in fear and in much trembling. My speech and my proclamation were not with plausible words of wisdom, but with a demonstration of the Spirit and of power, so that your faith might not rest on human wisdom, but on the power of God. Yet among the mature we do speak wisdom, though it is not a wisdom of this age or of the rulers of this age who are doomed to perish. But we speak God's wisdom, secret and hidden, which God decreed before the ages for our glory. None of the rulers of this age understood this, for if they had, they would not have crucified the Lord of glory. But, as it is written, what no eye has seen nor ear heard nor the human heart conceived what God has prepared for those who love him. These things God has revealed to us through the Spirit, for the Spirit searches everything, even the depths of God. For what human, beings know, being, for what human being knows what is truly human, except the human spirit that is within so also no one comprehends what is truly God's except the Spirit of God. Now, we have received not the Spirit of the world, but the Spirit that is from God, so that we may understand the gifts bestowed on us by God. May God bless to our understanding this reading of the Scripture. Will you pray with me? Gracious and mighty God, we come before you on this day of days asking your blessing, your guidance, and your help. As we have read from your word and now seek to interpret it, be with us, guide us, and help us that the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts together might be acceptable in your sight. For you are our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Paul is writing to the church at Corinth about the gifts of God and is trying to establish with these folks an understanding that this God thing, it don't make sense. To human understandings and human times and a human nature, the nature of the gifts of God don't make sense. As a group of Christians sitting in a sanctuary on a Sunday morning, you should all have the perplexed look on your face that you have on your face. It's like, what do you mean? Gifts of God make perfect sense. But for you to really understand what Paul is saying, we have to transform you. So I brought my magic pencil because I couldn't. Where's King Kelly? I couldn't find my magic wand. I'm, I don't know what I did with it. Those of you at their wedding understand that. <laughs> or if they've, they've seen the pictures on Facebook, that's true. And I'm going to transform you into first-century Greeks. Arthanos, I, oh wait, I didn't change your language skills. <laughs> A first century Greek understands the difference between human and spirit as two very different spheres. And they are not joined together. They actually battle within the human being for dominance. Okay, so while we tend to think of life in a little more integrated format, and first century Greek, or well, 
a resident of Corinth, would have thought of the spiritual self and the physical self as two bodies that are battling for control of the body. Make sense? Kind of? Okay, so I wrestled with how to illustrate this, and I finally decided that my family of origin was helpful. Because in my family of origin, there were five of us, three kids, two adults, and two of us were right-handed, but three of us were left-handed. I'm one of the righties, by the way, just in case that distracted you. And there was a battle in our house for where things went. How many, how many sinestrals, how many left-handers do we have in the room? We've got a few. Okay, that's about normal for the population, actually. And there was a constant battle. And there were more lefties than righties in my family of origin. So this constant battle of putting things away in the left-handed manner versus in the right-handed manner was an ongoing fight. Now, my father was the other right-hander. My brother, my sister, and my mother were all left-handers. And it got so bad at one point, we finally had to try to prove to the lefties that the dog was right-handed too. Because we had a pet door, and it was clear from the stains on the pet door, which paw he used to open the door. And it was definitely his right forepaw on, this, on the right side going out and coming in. So clearly the dog was right-handed. It didn't help our battle at all. But it was fun and a little bit logical, so we went with it. To this day, if I'm in my mother's house and I'm cooking, because I don't know if I've told you this about our household, but I'm the primary cook at home, and therefore when we go to family events and whatnot, I'm often the one that's cooking. I start to look for something, and then I have to tell myself, oh wait, I'm in mom's kitchen. So I go to the exact opposite end of the kitchen of wherever I think the thing should be, and nine out of ten times, boom, there it is. It's, a, it's an amazing phenomenon that... I can only imagine, I, I, I honestly, I, I wonder how my parents navigated it because they both cooked, they shared that duty, and I, I don't know who gave in. I really, I'm really not sure. I think my father just kind of gave up because it really wasn't worth the effort and said, fine, put it where you want it, I'll find it. <laughs> there you go. She said, right, must be true. To a Greek, that battle makes perfect sense. To us, the battle of where you put things, if you're right or left-handed, makes a lot of sense. If you've ever sat down at an opposite-handed person's desk and tried to find the pencil drawer, you know exactly what I'm talking about. Right? Because it's opposite. I can almost guarantee it. Now, it never got so weird as my brother who, while the rest of the world, well, let me just check with you on this. Is this a universal symbol still? Yes. 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 This is how my left-handed brother does it. Be because he didn't want his watch dragging across his paper, he put his watch on his right hand so that his... What's that, Corey? Yeah, many do, and it's because of the, the setting and wind dial you can get to it better because it's designed by right-handed people. I mean, it, the whole world gets into this. I had a friend not long ago ask why the toilet uh, handle was always on the left as you're looking at the toilet. And I had to explain to him because plumbing is a right-hand dominant field like most, and it's much easier to attach one this way if you're right-handed than to have to come over here and use your left hand and feel like you're going backwards on the threads. It's really that simple. And in the Greek world, it was that simple in terms of spirituality, which meant if you were seeking to better your spiritual self, you basically could take your human self and put it aside and go into the sanctuary, the temple, the whatever, and be spiritual, and then 
put it in its neat little box and put it away and go back to being very human. And this is where we run into trouble trying to understand what Paul is saying. Because we are a people who have come to an understanding that the spiritual element of our self is a part of our whole self. It is a driving force. It is what gives us salt and light and flavor and meaning and all of those things that Kathy was talking about from Matthew and the Sermon on the Mount. And yet we live in a world where a lot of people still want to have that Greek understanding. The gifts bestowed on us by God don't translate to many in the world because, for lack of a nicer way to say it, they're still being humanists. My talents are my talents. My gifts are just me. Yet to a Christian, the notion of empathy and sympathy and compassion and caring, spiritual gifts that Paul enumerates later in this letter, there's no explanation for where they come from. That's just me being a good or moral person, a humanist might say. If I'm compassionate or kind or loving or caring or merciful, if I'm generous... And yet it's completely against human, human, human nature, isn't it? Survival of the fittest, self first, take care of me, give you what's left. And it just doesn't make sense. Unless, unless, you put it in the perspective of Christ first. See, I submit to you, church, that this section of 1 Corinthians, this setup, if you will, for the spiritual nature and understanding spiritual gifts and understanding them because of the Spirit. Remember, Paul has written to the church at Corinth, your spirit understands your spiritual gifts and it doesn't make sense to your body, that what Paul is ultimately getting at is just what we talked about, becoming fully integrated, allowing your spirituality to exist not only on Sundays in this 80 by 40 space, more or less. I bet I'm close. Don, do you remember? No, I don't <laughs> Um, he's the only one in the room that would remember exactly what the width and length of the room was. But to understand that the message of Jesus, the, the gifts that we have, the desire to do good, to be compassionate, to be caring, to be loving, to be generous, to be prayerful, doesn't shut off at 10.42 on Sunday. And can't. <clears throat> and this is the big key. When you understand that God has given you gifts to be used all the time, you don't want to shut them off. Right? We want to be good Christians. Sunday to Sunday to Sunday to Sunday and every day and minute in between. And our human nature makes it hard because we're going to rub up against those that just don't want to let that happen. Well, unless it's to their advantage. And then they want to take advantage. Church, you have been given gifts by God not only to be exactly who you are, but to be it in such a way that you are salt and light to the world, that your gifts allow other people to see the brightness and joy of life in Jesus Christ, that your gifts allow others to see the acceptance of Jesus Christ and Christ's church, even if the society says to you, you're a little bit different. Isn't that right, Ken? Because he's a little bit different. 
<laughs> Amen. Rich kid. <laughs> We call that plausible deniability. <laughs> God has made you into a unique gift from God, fully integrated in spirit and body. And God did that so that the world would be allowed to know God through you. As you go into this week, be intentional about letting your Sunday gifts shine. Jesus is counting on you. Don't let him down. Amen.